Hey, Tom Donnie here. Going to look at serial number seven, a replica Sonnet 1. And uh, you see the Sonnet emblem I showed you there. We're working on the shifter, too. And maybe we can get rid of the hearse and have someone really good like Nick Talaferro fix it for us and put Sonnet on that shifter. But this car's got an original 750 GT engine in it. It's never ran right. It's always ran like it's it follows plugs, so it runs on two cylinders. And you think to yourself, gosh, it almost runs better on two cylinders than it did on three, which kind of leads you down. Uh, it must have a, an exhaust issue, right? Whenever you have a car that doesn't run quite right and follows plugs on a two-stroke, a lot of times you can lead that back to, ignite, or to uh, the exhaust system. I have gone through the ignition system, the carburation system, and this is a really cool car. They, they, a lot of great craftsmanship went into making this car, and it's a hoot to drive. I just got to get it running right, running properly for a, as light as it is. And with that engine, it ought to run like a scalded cat or a raped ape. I mean, it ought to just flat out fly down the road. So I think I found the problem with it. We're going to talk about expansion chambers real quick. An expansion chamber is something that's required on every two stroke engine. There's a, an aftermarket one we're making. Um, and we tune those. Of course, on our Bonneville car over there on the dyno, we run three independent chambers, one for each cylinder. And you could tune those independent for each cylinder to give you a wider power band, which is why the Saab exhaust manifold is three different lengths, if you've ever noticed that. But we'll take a peek here quick at an engine. And we're looking in the exhaust port here of a two-stroke engine of a Saab three-cylinder two-stroke. And as you can see, there's no valves. You can go, you can look right through there. There's my light. You can look right through and see all the way to daylight. So without a valve there, how do we keep freshly charged fuel in the top of the combustion chamber? On a four-stroke, we use valves. On a two-stroke, we use a virtual valve by controlling the gas from one cylinder. So as the gas comes through here and it starts to expand and does its little magic, it then gets squeezed back down into the reflection part of the chamber and then it gets forced back up and we have a virtual valve appear at our exhaust manifold right at where the piston is getting ready to come up, start making its trip back up. The pressure supplies enough force to keep the freshly charged fuel that's coming in through our intake and working its way through the engine and it, it doesn't exhaust then out the side of the block, this virtual sound wave, I guess it's not a virtual sound wave, it's a real sound wave, it's real back pressure, but it becomes a virtual valve, it blocks off and keeps our freshly charged fuel in there. So you got to have that on a two-stroke engine. Um, you got to have back pressure, just absolutely have to have it. On a four-stroke, the exact opposite is true. On a four-stroke, you never want back pressure. Okay, take a look at your top fuel dragsters. How many of them have just a straight pipe coming out? People will commonly say, oh, four-stroke has to have back pressure, and that is 100% false. A two-stroke, on the other hand, must have back pressure. And what's happened on this Sonnet is as good a job as they did you know, in making this car, which I think is phenomenal. Um, I don't know what happened, but they, this is what they use. This is a... This is one of my front mufflers right here. This is a factory muffler. There's a chamber we're making, and we're making these for the 96s, 93s, 95s. Um, so if you want to add some performance, uh, the quickest way to get performance on a two-stroke Saab is to change your exhaust chamber. And we call them front mufflers, but they're really expansion chambers is what they are. They're not really front mufflers. Yes, they do muffle the sound, but they're expansion chambers. <laughs> Excuse me. So we'll take a look. This is the system that came off of this car right here. And you can see here's the inlet on it, just like we have here. And then here's the outlet, and they've got a little muffler on the back. And I thought it was probably this muffler till I realized it's see-through. So that's just a sound deadener, not going to cause any restriction. But first thing we noticed is this front chamber has been really hot in here. This is the one off of the car. And you can see how hot that area is there, different color metal. I hadn't actually noticed that right away. One of my uh, longtime employees, Dave Rowe, who's helped with the Bonneville car a whole bunch, been to Bonneville several times, he noticed it right away. He's an old welder and torque converter builder, and he said, hey, that's been super hot. And it has. You can see it. And what's happened here 
is just because of the way they needed to make the exhaust fit, they had it come in here and they had it come through this hole and up into up onto the exhaust manifold. And it all it actually fits really well like this. Um, again, they hooked the head what we call the head pipe here to the outlet, and then here's what would be the inlet, and it fits beautiful that way. The problem is it won't work that way. And it's evident by this heat and the fact the car follows plugs and doesn't run well, runs as good on two cylinders as it does three. So I've got a, an exhaust cut apart here so we can take a look at it. And if you ever wonder what one of these pipes look like inside, this is it. And what we have here is the, you know, the exhaust gas goes in through here and it starts to expand in the center belly section just like it does here. You know, here we have an expansion area, we have a belly section right there, and there we have our reflection area. And the hip front part is called the lead pipe. Uh, the tail is called the stinger. Everything has a fact, is a factor in a two-stroke system. They all have an impact. So what happens is it comes in here, it expands, expands right into here, and then it can't all get out because there's a, there's a barrier. If we look down in here, and I really can't do it with one person, but we look down in here, it can't really get out. It hits that the back. It hits the back of that pipe, so it all kind of just builds up back here, rolls around and builds up. So what's that do? It becomes a reflection area, causes back pressure, forces it back. So the gases build up here. Sound waves work their way back through the pipe. Boom! We come up here. We become a virtual valve for our engine. So that's how the process works. Now we look at the exhaust we have on this car the front chamber and I've looked down it and I thought maybe they took the guts out and turned everything 180 in there and that this would truly be the inlet but unfortunately they didn't it's the outlet so I think that's what's going on here is they have kind of missed the concept of a two-stroke front expansion chamber front front muffler and uh, put it on there and just doesn't work like it should so everything comes into this little area here, which isn't big enough to expand. You have to, that's why it's called an expansion chamber. There's no area for the gases to expand in here because they're all stuck right there. Hence all the heat buildup we see right there and the discoloration of the metal. And then it has to kind of roundabout work its way out the tailpipe and it really um, chokes it down. It's like sticking a potato in the tailpipe. It's not gonna work real well on a four stroke. And that's why this little guy, runs just as good on two cylinders as it does on three. Because on two cylinders, you know, the gas has a better chance of getting out. So for a single cylinder, that might work okay. But uh, for a three cylinder, it's not gonna work at all. So we're custom making a chamber here. And um, we've taken one of our existing chambers and we've cut the head pipe off right there. And we're putting a new head pipe in, same length there. And then we'll cut this system basically cut this in half to get it inside the car and then there would be the outlet on a factory setup where Saab has to run it you know because of design Saab has to run it underneath the floor pan but on this one we'll be able to do what we you should do on any expansion chamber if you got space is we'll make it come out the end of the pipe like it should into the stinger and then it'll go on and we'll put our tail our little muffler back in here and there's our tailpipe, and we'll get it all functioning. And I think this is going to run really good when we're done. Um, we're working on some shifter stuff, trying to make a reverse lockout on it and make some gates for the shifter because it's, it's kind of a bear to drive right now. And this thing is so much fun to drive. We want to make it so that when people come to the museum, we can give them rides. Sometimes you can drive it, whatever, and uh, we can have a lot of fun with it. So once we get this exhaust front muffler, expansion chamber issue taken care of, I think it'll be good. But again, if you ever wanted to see what the inside of one looks like, there it is. You know, this just obviously would fit in here like that. And um, it expands through here, builds up back pressure, creates a virtual valve here, and then exhaust starts coming out. And that gives you your pop, 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 pop. Anyway, um, just kind of an exhaust 101 for two stroke. And keep in mind that, you know, these two-stroke systems require something different. They're not a four-stroke. There's a little history on the car. So um, it's not a four-stroke. And you have to have 
back pressure. All right. So with that said, I think uh, I'll probably just uh, let you guys off the hook and you can get back to doing. Oh, we do. We do more than just transmission work. How, how'd you like to be doing that job? Huh? That uh, engine was out. Anyway, here's a look at our Bonneville car. And there you can see the triple chambers. Those are head pipes, obviously, leading down. There's one expansion chamber coming out right there. That's the stinger. And again, the length of the stinger, the diameter of the stinger, everything about the stinger is a factor as well as the reflection part of the chamber. And then the other two run out underneath the car. So it actually fits pretty good in there, as you can see. But uh, that's your best way to get optimal performance. Um, I don't think it matters much till about 7,000 RPMs. So then it seems like we start picking up a lot of power. This engine just flies at 7,000 RPMs. So anyway, that's all I've got for today. Um, appreciate everybody watching and try to keep those two strokes stroking. All right. This is Tom Donny from Fort Dodge and Sturgis Saab Heritage Car Museum signing off.